you know, throughout the service, you know, from right from the very beginning to right from the very end, you know, God might speak one word to you that can make a difference in your life this week. And, uh, you know, church, as you come to church every week, that it's not just out of, of um, moral obligation that we go to church, but it's out of relationship with God. And, uh, you know, can I challenge you that every time you come into this place, that you get one word from God. You know, I've challenged myself over the last, you know, two years that I come into this place and every week I go home with one word. And that word, I, I meditate on it and I just, no, no. And, and I just, just keep going over and over and over it because that's the renewing of the mind, amen? Amen. 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 So uh, we're just gonna pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you that you are so wonderful. You're so merciful and loving and gracious to us. Lord God, we just thank you that we can come into your presence this morning. And Lord God, we just thank you that you are here. We acknowledge that you are in our midst. And Lord God, we have a reverence and a, and a, um, a reverential fear because we're so in awe of you this morning. And Father, we just thank you for the work that you did on the cross, that we never, ever forget it. In Jesus' name, bless these wonderful people. In Jesus' name, I just pray that these are your words and not my words. In Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. 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 Last night, we had our Pastor Cameron speaking, and um, I was trying to think. It wasn't actually the word that I, that I took home from last night, but um, I was trying to think. Um, he did actually say something, and um, so I had to get the notes from Grant. And... Um, well, I'm going to give it back to him, but it spoke about um, talk, the words out of our mouths, that we can get so wound up that the words that come out of our mouths, are they life or death? And uh, that's what Pastor Cameron, that was a bit of what he was sharing last night and a bit, bit about getting offended, how we can get so easily offended, but um, that's the bit that I took home with me. <laughs> but, um, you know, I just want to... Um, bounce off from there, if that's okay, church, that, you know, last week, we, Cameron spoke about that in character, our character is built when we're in suffering. Did yes, everyone, yes, did everyone get yes. that from last week? That our character is built from suffering. And, uh, you know, I don't know about you, but I've been through some sufferings. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they're not the best or the easiest things to go through but we still go through them. And we're still here today. Isn't that amazing? We're still here today. And uh, last night, Carol was speaking about our character. And uh, again, this morning, I'll be talking about the Word of God and what the Word of God has to speak about our character. So if you can turn with me this morning to Proverbs 23, verse seven. Proverbs 23, verse seven. Just on a, just off this, I was um, talking to some people at work, and uh, one of them said, "Oh, I'm just so ugly." Isn't that a sad statement to say? I'm just so ugly. Not me, but they were talking about themselves. Okay, <laughs> I wouldn't have a few words to say, <laughs> but uh, they were just saying, "I'm just, I don't just don't feel pretty. I just don't feel, you know, I feel like I'm just absolutely." low and just ugly and uh, it's amazing that when you were reading the word of God you come across some really really th things that just like on the inside of you spirit man jumps <laughs> and uh, this was one of those moments this week for me and uh, you know I was able to go back and speak to that person and because uh, the word of God is, is a living powerful Two-edged sword. Two -edged sword. <laughs> and uh, it came to me that it says in, in, in the Word of God that it says that he will beautify the humble. <laughs> in Psalm 149 verse 4 it says, he will beautify the humble. So guess what we have to do? Be humble. Because he does all the beautification. <laughs> 
And, uh, you know, as Christians, we can start speaking into people's lives, have the opportunity to speak into that person's life with the Word of God. Amen. And, you know, they may not, they, they probably look at me and go, you crazy thing, you. <laughs> but there's something about a humble person that is very attractive because there's nothing about themselves <laughs> it's nothing about themselves but it's about something you know even even people in the world have this quality they can be humble they can be humble because they're not so full of themselves and you know we've got to grab those people and start speaking that you know God needs you God wants you to have a purpose in your life you know humble people some people believe that humble people are weak people but they're not weak people they are people that are lacking direction sometimes, particularly the ones that are out in the world, because they don't have a purpose like we do as Christians, amen? amen? They don't have a purpose to go, God, we're worshipping you every single day of our lives. So, um, you know, that was just off the topic, but anyway. <laughs> but, you know, start living just the little things, just the little things. Let God start speaking to you or continue to speak to you. So, back to Proverbs 23, verse 7. Let's read. I'm reading the Amplified. It says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he in behavior. I'm going to read that again. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he in behavior. You know, our character is built on what we do in our behavior. You know, if we've got behavior that doesn't stick to things, guess what we're going to get? We're going to get really, really shaky ground, unstable ground. If we're not a people that, that will go, you know what, I'm so stubborn that when I hear from God, I'm going to hold on to his word. You know, you can be stubborn in that way. And that's okay. I like that stubborn. I like that stubbornness. That you go, God, I'm holding on to your word because I heard from you. Yeah. I'm going to hold on with everything I've got, have the faith to see it through. And, you know, it says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. You know, that lady that I was talking about this week, that she thought in her heart that she was not pretty, that she was low, that she wasn't worth anything. But, you know, when we start thinking the word of God, you know, I was talking about renewing your mind. And renewing your mind is about meditating on the word of God day and night. You know, throughout the day, you may be going about your business. You may be shopping. And, you know, you just stop in the supermarket and you start going, God, you're so wonderful. God, your scripture says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Great is thy faithfulness. <laughs> you know, start picking up those scriptures that build you up on the inside. That it's not about what I have to say about myself. It's not what Pastor Cameron has to say about me. It's not about Pastor Ian, what he has to say about me. But it's about God and what the Word of God says. So it says in the Word of God, For as he thinks in his heart, so is his behaviour. What things are we behaving like? Are we behaving in a loving manner? Do we have love in our actions? Do we have the joy about our lives? Do we have peace in the decisions that are made in our lives? If not, go back to the Word of God. Seek God. Pray about it. <laughs> it's not an easy thing, this character. Because I can tell you ways of doing things that works for me, but it doesn't work for Pastor Cameron, and vice versa. Continuing on, it says, He says to you, eat and drink, yet his heart is not with you. You know, I was pondering on that second bit, he says, eat and drink, yet his heart is not with you. Have you ever been to someone invites you over and at the end of the night you go away and you go, something just, there was a hidden agenda you felt? <laughs> because it wasn't out of love. 
that they wanted to talk to you or out of a relationship. <laughs> we had that quite recently, we didn't we, Cameron? Where we went to lunch with somebody and, uh, you know, you came away and just there was just something on the inside of you that, you know, you just go, that wasn't right, God. What they said wasn't right. It didn't come out of the spirit of love. It didn't line up with your word. <laughs> you know, it says, let peace be your umpire. The opposite of peace is there's something unsettled, something that just really gets under your skin and starts to stir up on the inside. And then, it, you know, that stirring and that unsettledness becomes anger, frustration, strife. These are things that I've got to work on. I don't know about you, church, but, you know, Cameron was talking about, you know, he had an anger problem and sometimes it sometimes pops its ugly head and you've got to beat it back down. <laughs> well, for me, I get really frustrated when something on the inside just starts to... Ugh. Is that a word? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Just... And then you start to meditate on that. That person should have said that. Oh, that person, blah, blah, blah. You start to meditate on that instead of meditating and going, God, I'm just releasing this to you. And you start focusing on him. <laughs> I'm preaching to myself. I'm preaching to myself. <laughs> You know, and I've lost it because of that, because I've focused on people's opinion. I've focused on what people, you know, said and thought about me. And I thought, you know, what right does that person have? What right? Started getting really upset and angry about it. <laughs> you know, God didn't want me to do that. Focus on that. It says that he is our first love. He is a jealous God. He doesn't want us to focus on that rubbish. <laughs> he is a jealous God. He wants us to his own. You know, if I sat with Cameron and I started going, that person Cameron, blah, 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 and I kept going on and on about it. You know, I've had sessions that would last days. <laughs> I've had sessions that I would carry this burden around with me for days, if not weeks. And I go, Cameron, blah, 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 blah. You know what? Cameron started to switch off. That's from experience. I reckon God was stuck going, you know what? I've heard that a million times. I'm switching off to that. <laughs> because that's not what I want you to do. You know, sometimes we just keep talking and talking. Even over the top of you, I start talking and blah, 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 Cameron. You know, that person, blah, 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 blah. And he's talking to me. He's trying to say something to me. And uh, I'm not listening. I'm so focused on the thing that's really upsetting me. <laughs> For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Don't let those things get inside your heart. Further on it says, in the mess, I love what the message Bible says. Proverbs 23, 7 to 8 says, don't accept a meal from a tight wad. <laughs> That's what it says. Don't accept a meal from a tight wad. Did you know, I looked, I'm like, what's a tight wad? I Googled this. Google is my friend with, with, yeah. these type, with this type of language. And it said, North American term, where's Lachlan? Anyway, no, North American term meaning a mean or misery person. It's a mean or miserable person. <laughs> Don't accept a meal from a tightwad. Don't expect anything special. He'll be as stingy with you as he is with himself. He'll say, eat, drink, but won't mean a word of it. He's miserably serving. Oh, I don't know about you, but with my food, I like a good portion, not a miserable portion. Will turn your stomach. <laughs> when you realise the meal's a sham. You know, we've got to start becoming a smart church and realising what's a sham. 
Does everyone know what I mean? Am I speaking a different language? No. A sham. <laughs> Something that's fake. We've got to realise what's fake. We've got to realise.